Hey guys, how's it going? Anthony Mutaraja, you're back with a new video lesson for y'all. Before I get to the actual lesson, if this is your first time on the channel, do subscribe. If you haven't already, hit that notification bell right there so you don't miss any videos that I put out, lessons and whatnot. Um, also, before I get to the lesson, I would like to announce my new ebook, Major Scales Inside Out, will be out on the 30th of August. All right, that is about 10 days away, roughly. So, very excited to have this book out. It's quite a collection of ideas and concepts that I've used, not just with the major scales, but the major scales is a great place to start because it is the mother of all scales, I believe, and the mother of all harmony. 90% of music comes from there, so I thought it will be great to have this book out there. It took me a while to get it together because I wanted to be sure I didn't miss out too many things, neither overload with information. So 30th of August, 2021, <clears throat> check it out. And of course, if you have any questions about it or whatever, drop me an email and I'm happy to answer or leave a comment below. Okay, so in today's lesson, I want to talk about one thing that I've always asked any jazz musician. Do we play over changes or do we play through changes? Okay, so in order to be able to solo over or through changes, first of all, you need to establish the harmony involved and you need to know what's happening with the chords. Okay. So from a very basic standpoint, it is really about knowing what is appropriate to play over set chords. Now, actual improv doesn't always give you that liberty. A lot of times things might change, harmony might change. So in that moment, you have to react. And there's no way you can react if you can't hear something. Okay, so to reiterate my thought and point, I'm going to share a little clip of me um, where I just put together a bunch of chords with strings, just inspired by some small ideas, and then I just played a bass solo on top of it. And you can hear and tell that I don't really entirely remember what I played on the piano. And I played ideas and I made changes as the changes on the actual track came along. So no preparation, just one take. So have a listen right now. Alright, so as you can hear, I liked some of the ideas that I played. Some of the ideas um, were not so great because I landed on certain odd notes, but I was quick to correct it based on how I heard the actual harmony. Okay, so to take a deeper look at whether we play through or over changes, what I would like to think about is, let's take two chords, let's take a C major 7 and then maybe a C sharp or D flat major 7. OK, 
okay? Two sets of major sevenths. Now, immediately when I think of these two chords, my mind is working in a very different way in the sense of what are my common notes between these two chords? There's one, C. Okay, that's established. Now, what scales do I go for? If I'm going Lydian on both ends, I'm going to have two notes common between the two scales. Now, I did discuss common tones on a previous video. I'm going to put the link right there for you to check out. So, when you start to create a link this way, you start to connect the changes through each other as opposed to, okay, I have this chord, I played that, and then I have the next chord incoming and I'm gonna play this. So instead of going that and that and that, you're gonna start sounding like you're playing what's apt for every bar as opposed to playing something that covers a wider ground. So when you listen to chord progressions, when you listen to piano players comp, when you listen to chords on the bass even, Everything is about continuity. It's about a flow. It's not just about chord, scale, chord, scale, chord, chord tone, scale, chord, chord tone, scale. No. You have to look at the bigger picture. So to practice this, to practice the ability to go through chord changes, try something very simple. You take a chord progression, okay? Four chords, let's say. So let's go with what I had here. C major seven, D flat major seven, B flat minor 7 to B minor 7. <clears throat> so now I'm just going to sing one note per chord. And then based on what the next chord presents, I'm going to try to move that one note. So... So... Now, I'm going to build on top of this. So I'm really focusing on these long notes transcending between the chords as opposed to doing this. That's so fragmented and a rather annoying way of practicing it. So you don't even have to know a lot of scales or chord tones and arpeggios and extensions. You just have to take one note between each chord. Hold on to that note for dear life. Once the next chord presents itself, move that note up or down to a relevant note within that key center, not even a chord tone. And then from there, you just slowly piece things together, okay? Now, before the bebop police calls me out, I understand the bebop vocabulary is something irreplaceable, but it is, after all, a particular sound in that time. Okay, with a lot of love and respect, I think we all need to respect what happened then the work of guys like Charlie Parker, Clifford Brown, Dizzy, and all the greats, and leave them be. I think we need to try and find different ideas inspired by that. So a lot of the things you heard Bird do, Dizzy do, incorporated these elements of flowing through the harmony as opposed to playing each chord by itself and then trying to play chord tone, so on and so forth. One note per chord, flow it into the next, hold on to it, and then slowly build it up from there. All right, I hope you get something out of this. Once again, the ebook is out on the 30th of August. So that's all for this video. I will see you guys in the shed until the next one.
Peace.